everyone, your Tootsie Blabber is saying hi to you from India! In 2022, I got a chance to experience one of the coolest travel adventures of my life. Travel to India. The trip was full of magnificent adventures. We attended Hindu and Christian weddings, met wonderful people, tasted lots of different Indian foods, visited local people's homes, got a special permission to visit a temple that is close to the public eye, enjoyed sunny Goa, explored the crocodile land, got matching tattoos, bought wedding rings, and many more. Yanni and I got an invitation to attend our friend Lorenzo's niece's Kimberly and Tejas' wedding, and there was no way we would ever say no. Kimi and Tejas planned not only one, but two wedding ceremonies, Hindu wedding ceremony and Christian one, as each of them is part of a different religion. Our small but mighty group of four people started a two and a half week journey to India. We all slept about one or two hours, but we are so ready. Even our taxi ride was screaming, India! On our way to Helsinki airport, we got a taxi driver who was absolutely obsessed with Bollywood. He gave us an impressive intro to India and showed us a video of his favorite Bollywood performance, which we might see later in the video. Lorenzo, are you ready? Yes. Lorenzo, Marit, Yanni and I flew from Helsinki to Germany, Frankfurt and then continued with an eight and a half hour flight to Mumbai. Warm, smoggy air hit us the moment we got to the airport. We met our taxi driver and took a three and a half hour long drive to Pune. And we're off to Pune. Night rides are apparently much easier than day rides when there's a lot of traffic. Where is the helmet? And the kids oh are my God. However, people work long hours and most of the car accidents happen during night when drivers fall asleep. With one short stop... Yanni, what's the temperature? 27. In the early hours of the following morning, our driver brought us safely to our destination, Pune. Our dear friend and Lorenzo's partner, Harshal, who is also the fifth member of our traveling group and who went to India a few weeks before us to meet his family and work from abroad, greeted us with the warmest hug at a hotel lobby together with Lorenzo's family members, including the bride and the groom, the stars of our trip, Kimberly and Tejas. Welcome to India! Our room is gorgeous, wow. We haven't slept for 24 hours. Our hotel, the Corinthians Resort and Club was really beautiful. We stayed in one of their best rooms. Their premises were gorgeous and their hospitality kind and thoughtful. Sometimes we had some hiccups in the communication, but I think that might have been due to our cultural differences. What is common in India is that there are, in my opinion, too many staff members in restaurants and hotels and there might be some lost in translation moments when, for example, ordering from one person and receiving the wrong dish from the other staff member. My most challenging part of each day were breakfasts due to my gluten and lactose intolerances, but I pretty much survived on boiled eggs, bananas and my own little gluten-free porridge bags I brought from Finland. Our first day in India was a Sangeet preparation day. We took a car ride with Lorenzo's sister Sophie and her husband Ian. They took us to the bride's good family friends Rohini and Reggie's place. They were the hosts of the first and to me the most fun Hindu wedding celebration. A dancing event called Sangeet which was happening the following day. So this is bride and groom and this is where they're gonna have their Sangeet. Yes, Sangeet. 
Sangit in Hindi language means music, but when it's used as a term, it describes the musical celebration night of the union of the soon-to-be-married couple and bonding of their both friends and families. It can be a huge party or a small intimate one. Kimi and Tejas had around 100 people in the penthouse of their family friend's house, whose gorgeous apartment overlooked the city of Pune. Our small but mighty group of five had only 24 hours to rehearse our sangi dance song I Got the Feeling from Justin Timberlake. The rest of the evening, the whole wedding crew spent dancing and eating delicious Indian food. Because we tried to um, estimate what your size would be because you're tall. Yanni and I tried on some outfits which were borrowed to us for the different ceremonies in the upcoming days. What are we wearing? Okay, so she's wearing a, a churida. churida. This is a kurti and the pants and a dupatta. And he's wearing a kurta. He's missing the pants but we're gonna get them. And it's the day of Sangeet. In order to attend it, we needed suitable clothing for each day of the ceremony, four of them in total. The bride and her family were so kind and generous to give us one full gorgeous outfit and jewelry to each of us. Uh, this is a gift from me and Tejas for you. What? Are you sure? I'm sure. I'm sure. Thank you! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, Amazing! Um, it's yours to have. And, uh, wow! The, I have it here. Oh, this one. The jewelry. What? Wow. Yes. Yes. Oh my oh god. My god. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. We still needed a couple of pieces of clothing, such as matching pants and shoes, to finish our outfits, so we headed to the famous MG Road or Mahatma Gandhi Road. This was also the first time that we used rickshaw, also known as tuk tuk. We are in tuksha. Rickshaw. 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 Sorry, not Tuksha. That first rickshaw ride was my first eye-opening moment. I dived into a reality and observed the streets full of life and diversity. There were street dogs, cows, lots of waste, big traffic jams, local people, barefoot children, beautiful outfits, small shops, all surrounded by a heavy, warm, smoggy air. Fun fact. MG Road is one of the most used road names in India. Uh, hey! How was the ride? How was your ride? How was the ride? Yeah! Oh, yeah. Oh, I don't have anything. Sorry. We are now on the location where we're gonna start buying all the necessary stuff for Sangit. Before we headed to the Sangit party, we got back to our hotel to change our clothes. The hotel staff was kind enough to help Marit and me dress up properly for the event. We are ready. Ta-da! <laughs> Once we got to Sangit, we had one of the best party nights in Pune. Wonderful catering, loud, cheerful music, happy faces and the excitement in the air. Pretty much everything that describes a good Sangit party. Everyone was looking forward to see what kind of dances had been carefully prepared. Sangit started with drums following a flower blessing of the bride Kimi and her closest family members and then each family and friends group started their dance performances. We saw some unbelievably great decimals by the groom's sister-in-law Anaga, super emotional sibling dances, soon-to-be bride and groom's romantic dance, and some fun western music choreographies such as ours. 
Yanni is trying Pani Puri. Pani Puri. Pani Puri. Sweet and, and hot at the same time with a crunchy dough. Now the heat is kicking in. <laughs> We were extremely honored to be part of this beautiful event and couldn't have waited for the upcoming days and other wedding functions to come. The day after Sangit was a bit more chill day and the day when mostly the ladies and the closest family members and friends gathered at Sophie's, Kimi's aunt's place, to get Mendy or famously known Henna by talented Mendy ladies. Welcome to my home. Thank you. Hello. Mendy can also be done prior to Sangit to show off the art of Mendy on the dance floor. This time around we did it the day after Sangit and it was such a blessing to have that one day of rest before the rest of the busy days of ceremonies continued. What is Mendy? Mendy is the practice of making designs on someone's hands, even feet, with henna, a reddish-brown dye, especially for someone's wedding day in India. Mendy is done two to three days before the official day of the wedding because it takes some days for it to darken on the skin. It is a common practice to dance to some folk dance, or fun-filled Bollywood songs during the Mandy gathering, so there I was, dancing during the alluring Mandy ritual. After each of us ladies got their beautiful Mandy, the bride's godmother blessed the bride and her brother by giving them special gifts and preparing Kimi to be given to her husband's family. By the way, although we used allergy-friendly henna, I did develop an extreme allergy reaction towards the end of our trip, so it was probably my last Mendy ever, but I enjoy every bit of the process and the design. Be really, really careful if you're prone to allergies like me, or if it's your first time using it. My allergy started almost a week later and it looked like bubbles on my skin. After Sangit and Mendy functions, we still had two Hindu wedding ceremonies to attend before the couple is officially married. We travel to the other side of Pune to attend the first of those last two functions called Simantan Puja. Before the first of two last functions started, we went to a local mall where, to our surprise, we had to go through security check, just like at the airport. We still had to buy a couple of clothing pieces and sue Marit Sari for the last and the most important part of the wedding. We are looking for a stitch place where Marit can stitch her sari for the event, but everyone is booked and we need someone urgently. To fix Marit's sari, we had to find a tailor who would inside 24 hours make the whole sari from the beautiful silk she got from one of the family members. We checked a couple of places and found one. Marit was measured and we continued to a delightful restaurant called The Silent Partner. There we had some of the best Indian cuisine on our whole trip. Each time we were told to be at a certain function at a certain time, we got hit by a culture shock called punctuality. In India, it is okay to be late. Yani, Marit and I tried really hard to adjust to it, but it still happened that we were the first people to arrive to every event. The wedding was supposed to start five minutes ago. They're still cleaning and setting up. And we often ended up a bit confused that we didn't give ourselves a bit of grace to be late, because it was simply not in our European blood. Before the second to last wedding function Simantan Puja started, the closest family members had a photo shoot in front of the venue. Simantan Puja is always happening one day before the official wedding day. The 
the day is all about the introduction of the both family members of the bride and groom. The bride and groom are gifted by their parents and family members, and the gifts are mainly jewelry and clothing pieces. The blessings and gifts are to make both families feel welcomed by each other's family. Kimberly and Tejas wrap the ceremony with a dance. The closest family members join the dance to celebrate the acceptance of their marriage. By joining the dance, the families gave full consent and approval for the marriage. The after Simantan Puja ceremony dance is apparently not that common as it only happens when both families are genuinely happy with the marriage. Now we all know what those two loving families feel for each other. Yeah. <laughs>